Battlefield 1's In the Name of the Tsar DLC just dropped onto the PC. With other platforms, the Xbox One and the PS4, those are being updated later today. I found a little table here for you, and that tells you when the servers are going to go offline for the update to be applied. But this video, I wanted to let you know everything that you can now work towards and unlock in this update. So all the new medals, all the new dog tags, weapons, codices, and the new service assignments. And I'm going to start with the service assignments because they're brand new to the game and they will let you unlock new soldier specializations. To get to the service assignments menu, first of all go to the soldier menu and you'll find it at the top of the list there. Once you open the page, you'll be presented with something similar to medals and ribbons, so it is fairly easy to follow. Each of those service assignment boxes has a set of challenges in them, and they appear to the right-hand side when you click on them. You're also able to track a certain set of challenges in-game, which is a good move considering how long it took to get certain other things tracked in Battlefield 1. Nice to see this available from the start for service assignments. Now, all five groups in the Getting Started section here are available for you to work towards now, and you must complete three of these five to then unlock the Staying Focus section, which is below it. And that is where you'll be able to unlock all of the new Soldier Specializations. Now, three of them have already been unlocked for you and are applied to your Soldier. Flak, Quick Regen, and Cover. And these are now shown in the Customize menu. Once you've completed some of the staying focused assignment groups, you'll unlock more specializations that can be applied to your soldier for specific classes. And these will slightly change your soldier's abilities, so it's worth trying to work towards them, seeing what fits your playstyle, and then applying some brand new abilities. That service assignment's out of the way, so let's look at some of the other new unlockables in this DLC. Of course, we have 11 new weapons coming, all of which are locked away behind weapon assignments. Complete each assignment and you'll unlock a weapon to use. Now some weapons have multiple variants which will require a different assignment to be completed, so there's plenty of work for you to do here. To find all of the new unlock assignments, head into the Customize menu, drop into the weapon lists, and you'll see each new weapon variant at the bottom. Highlight that and the assignment will appear at the side for you. These are all tracked in game so there's no need for you to activate anything and any progress towards any of the new weapon unlock assignments that will pop up above the minimap during multiplayer matches to let you know what progress you're making. But of course, it's not just primary and secondary weapons that you'll be unlocking in this DLC. There were supposed to be quite a few melee weapons coming with this expansion. However, I can only find two of them so far. One of them, the Cossack Dagger, is already unlocked for you and you can use it straight away. And the second one, my favourite, is the Dud Club. This is a grenade on the end of a wooden stick. It looks pretty cool and the rumour is that it might end up exploding randomly once in a blue moon when you use it. However, DICE has decided to stick this melee weapon as a puzzle piece collectible. So it's time to earn and open as many battle packs as you can if you want to get your hands on this one. Now some of the other melee weapons, I think there were like three others, I don't know where they've gone and I don't know how we're supposed to get hold of them. Maybe DICE is holding them back for some specific assignments or something like that. That could be cool if you have to sort of work your way towards them, but why wouldn't you just make them standard weapon unlocks? I'm not 100% sure here. There are several new medals coming with the Russian DLC as well, which can be selected and then tracked, providing they're in your random choice of five every week that you get given. Now, we have Spurs of the Cossack, which is all about using the new Russian-themed vehicles, Service Medal of Russian Labor, that's geared around playing the new Supply Drop game mode, Order of Peter the Great, which requires you to play on the new maps a little bit. Hero of Russia, that's shaped around getting you to play as all four classes, as the Russian forces. And finally, Brusilov Star. You need to use some of the new Russian-themed weapons here. As I said, all of these can be unlocked, but they have to be in your random choice of five. And if you're anything like me, it doesn't feel very random because I'm pretty sure there's some medals I've never attempted because they've never been there for me to unlock. 
Lots of new dog tags have been added with this update as well. The maximum rank of your soldier has also been up to 120 now from 110. So a new dog tag has been added if you reach 120. That's called Lieutenant General. We also have a supply drop dog tag, which you get for winning 50 matches of the new game mode. And an in the name of the Tsar dog tag, which you get for winning one match on each of the six new maps. Four new premium dog tags have been added as well. We have Imperial Eagle, Immortal Hussars, the Kremlin, and Rasputin. No unlock requirements for these, which I think is a shame and a missed trick by DICE. Previous Battlefield games made people work for rewards. I'm not a fan of these in-game rewards just being handed out, but that's just my opinion. There are several other dog tags as well for all the new weapons, which can be unlocked by getting 100 kills with that specific weapon. Lots of new codices have been added as well, which will run passively in the background as you work towards them. These will tell you a little bit more about the weapons that you're using, gives you a little bit of information, and they only require 10 kills with each new weapon to unlock them. But of course, you've got to unlock the new weapons first. So you have to go through a weapon unlock assignment and then a codex assignment to really fully unlock that weapon. You do get some XP for doing it as well, plus you sort of get a check mark off against every single codex that you can do in Battlefield 1. I'm a collector, I like to do as many as I possibly can, so this for me is a good thing. It is worth noting that the new service assignment system that I mentioned at the start of this video is the start of something bigger here. DICE plans to add more stages to this system beyond getting started and the staying focused sections in the next update. So expect to see that system expanded along with more soldier specializations and potentially other items awarded to you for grinding your way through. DICE definitely heard the community's feedback that there wasn't enough to do in Battlefield 1 and they've gone all out with this DLC. The new service assignments and specializations, they are available to everyone, not just players who own the DLC or who have a premium pass. So everyone is going to get some new progression ladders to climb, which I think is really important. If you want people to stick around and play your game, you've got to make sure they've got plenty of things to do and the rewards that they get for doing those things are inviting. But there you are, lots of new things to unlock and play with in the In the Name of the Tsar DLC. Let me know if you've given the new maps and weapons a go yet, or maybe you're still waiting to get home from work so you can download the update and get going. I'll be back with plenty more videos this week covering all the new stuff so you can be right up to date with Battlefield 1. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.